what does coordination mean? Um, for me, I think the first thing it means is a rational use of resources. And you could say, who could be against a rational use of resources? Well, I would suspect that just about everybody working in the humanitarian field. Um, it also means a rational prioritization of needs. Um, it means that people from the engineering, water and sanitation, people from the health field, within the health field, people from immunization, uh, as opposed to emergency surgery, um, need to be able to sit together, people with, from, uh, from food and nutrition, emergency feeding programs, have to sit together and they have to decide what is most important at a given time. And I have not yet to sit in any meeting that has come to any consensus as to what the priorities are in any particular given area over a particular given period of time because everybody comes in. If I'm a ward and sanitation engineer, I know you need a latrine. You need a latrine because I'm designed to dig latrines and show you how to dig latrines. Um, if I come in from a food and nutrition program, I know that you need emergency food because I've got two packets of food with me. I've got to distribute those. I'm being uh, uh, very superficial. But we go in with vested interests. We go in with interests that are reflective of, of our backgrounds, our training, and what it is that we feel we can do. And hence, uh, we find those, uh, uh, the need for those to become priorities. Um, it also means a, a, a rationalization of funding. Um, and this, of course, is really the, the pits of the debate. Um, this is where uh, there is a fundamental disagreement between humanitarian agencies, between donors, and between humanitarian agencies and donors. There is no clear agreement. So in the tsunami, for example, Australia decided that we needed a cholera treatment uh, program um, uh, when in fact there was no cholera um, and uh, shipped in you know millions worth of drugs dollars of drugs um, which had to be distributed you can't you know let them go to waste um, were they required no there was no evidence that cholera was a major problem um, so we get these situations in where in which the the uh, the, the desire to move uh, doesn't necessarily uh, fit the need. It also means some type of rational hierarchy. Um, it means that someone has to be in charge. And traditionally it has been the United Nations Drug um, Development Pro, UNDP, the resident rep representative. In most countries the UNDP representative is a non-starter. Um, they're the last off the mark and uh, uh, at WHO, many years ago, there always used to be the, the joke that WHO knew everything but did nothing. UNICEF knew nothing but did everything. And UNDP knew nothing and didn't even try to do anything. Um, so with time, um, the UNDP resident coordinator has been replaced by a humanitarian coordinator in these uh, settings, sometimes drawn from within UNDP, but some, usually someone with... Uh, special training and not necessarily drawn for win uh, a, a UN organization. Um, prerequisites. Um, common and transparent aims, almost impossible to achieve. Uh, common and transparent objectives in terms of operational objectives. Um, again, very, very little um, uh, progress in that area. Um, a mutual respect between organizations. MSF has to respect WHO and WHO has to respect uh, the World Food Programme and the World Food Programme has to uh, respect Oxfam and so on. Forget it. Um, and there also has to be a respect by the intervention actors for local government. And this is, I think, probably the most controversial area because we all like to think that we're working in fragile states or collapsed states. And we're not. Whether it's a good government or a bad government, whether half the government has been killed as in Haiti, there are always some people behind and there are always fragments of a system. Um, and I have sat in meetings where a 21-year-old uh, uh, 
person from uh, an NGO has come in and sat with the Minister of Health in Bosnia and said, if you do not do what I say, then we will withdraw our funding. And he and I have collectively taken a decision to say, please do that in writing and do it by tomorrow, and of course nothing happens. But there's a tremendous arrogance in humanitarian relief. Uh, tremendous arrogance of, uh, we know what the needs are, we know what the answers are, uh, and we're going to impose those on you. And you must be in a terrible situation because you, you must have screwed up somewhere along the line, otherwise you wouldn't have a war. Uh, you must have screwed up because you wouldn't have had an earthquake. Um, you must have screwed up because you, wouldn't have been, you, you would have been able to respond yourselves better than you have been able to do that. Hmm? Um, and yet, just a few years ago, we saw the most developed country in the world not be able to respond to Katrina in, in, uh, in the United States, um, which highlights the complexity of humanitarian work, the complexity of responding to natural as well as man-made uh, disasters. Um, willingness to share all of these things, data and information, plans and programming, uh, human material, uh, logistical resources and donor contacts. Um, again, I, I do not know of one operation where there has been a successful sharing of either data and information and certainly not of donor contacts and certainly not sharing of human uh, personnel.